Hey you, my name is Thomas Tomscar Ridgewell and welcome back to The Complete History of Me, a show and tell series about me, Thomas Tomscar Ridgewell, and my life called The Complete History of Me. We rejoin our hero, who is me, Thomas Tomscar Ridgewell, during the death throes of my teens aged 19. My YouTube channel has around 10,000 subscribers. That Astro Movie thing I released not too long ago now has over a million views, and I've just received my first paycheck from YouTube for a hundred dollars. Oh yeah. Back at a webcomic convention, I meet James, Ast of Movies animator, and I give him a third of that money, a crisp 20 pound note. That seems perfectly fair, and I'm sure this will not come up again. Starting my second year at university, I rent and move into a place with my girlfriend Amy and her friends Tim and Laurel, the latter of whom I've just invited to be a part of Ed's World, and then killed off in the same episode. At a student fair, I commandeer an empty table and start the Tom Society. Somehow I sign on over 200 members by pointing at a blank piece of paper and saying, join now. I obviously do nothing with this information, People are just weird and like to sign up for things. Through a mixture of stress, laziness, and bad eating habits, I begin piling on the weight and soon reach a personal record of 210 pounds or 15 stone. Go me! Yes! After a year of tinkering, I release Ast of Movie 2, animated by my friend Ed, who also replaces my younger cousin in voicing the I Like Trains kid, its most popular character. I like trains! I like trains. <laughs> Ashton Kutcher tweets out the video, which was really cool in 2010, because he had the most Twitter followers. Yay! As I pile on the pounds, negative comments about my weight pile up, particularly on a video by my best friend Chris, and after one exceptionally unflattering encounter with a full body mirror, I just stop eating. You know, the healthy response. For three solid months, I live off around 300 to 500 calories a day on what I called the Omega Diet. It was basically starvation. I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it. Although I almost did once. I pick up a side gig, writing, producing, directing, and editing videos for the National Policing Improvement Agency. You can rest easy at night knowing that the police on your streets were trained by this guy. Between my second and third year of university, my girlfriend Amy leaves me in charge of her rats, one of which immediately dies of cancer. And I don't know what to do, so I panic and put it in a Jaffa cake box and leave that in the garden. I was running on very few calories, okay? Anyway, here's a picture of me airsofting. The massive gun is to make up for my tiny self-esteem. With my YouTube channel about to hit 100,000 subscribers, my friend Chris and I decide to legitimize our little cake bomb crew and get our own office. We nicknamed the office Plan B so that we can say, it's time to go to plan B, and we never actually say that because it's stupid. It's here that I begin hiring animators en masse to launch Tom Scar and Bing, a series based on my friendship with Chris. With no points of reference or experience within the industry, their payments are embarrassingly pitiful, and as I said before, I'm sure none of this will come up again. But speaking of animators getting a raw deal, my friend Ed's cancer makes a comeback, but they've caught it early, they say, so everything should be fine. Myself, Chris, and a few of our new friends begin a weekly tradition of going to the pub, and we unironically call it Man time. Soon after, the Cake Bomb crew all head down to London MCM Comic Con to man our first ever merch table. We meet loads of lovely people, some of whom I still see to this day, and our table is so popular that the people either side of us have to move, which was actually super awkward. At the start of 2011 though, it seems that Cake Bomb has run its course. With almost every single original member or friend no longer in our lives, it appears that we're stronger as individuals. So the site shuts down, the name fades into memory, and we all move forward as friends, not colleagues. It's here that I start trading as the one-man company, Turbo Punch. Along with the death of Cake Bomb, I decide to tweak a show I'd been working on about us to star fictional characters instead. It's called Crash Zoom, and animation on the first episode begins. Stuck in a particularly dull lecture, I sketch up a few parody advertisements for my university. When the videos come out, the establishment is not best pleased, so I hide away for a few days until the videos spike in popularity, and the university has no choice but to pretend that they love them. This also ushers in what I call my golden era of YouTubing. Despite almost coming to a premature end, my time at university concludes naturally with my dissertation on the predictability of viral video. I wrote it in four days and some really cool people let me interview them for it. Attempting to put my struggles with weight loss to good use, I make a series in which I give other people advice on how to lose weight. The advice is very bad and luckily the series never comes out, although I do manage to explode an ice cream in my hand and permanently damage my hearing. To celebrate our freedom from higher education, a group of us go on holiday to Turkey and it is wholesome and fun and this becomes a thing for some reason.
Although while I'm there, I learned that my girlfriend is planning on moving to Scotland to get a master's degree. So our relationship comes to an abrupt end and I wind up crying and vomiting drunk in a bathtub. Wholesome fun. I say goodbye to Lincoln and move back home with my parents. During this time, I attend my first ever summer in the city and realize that nobody really knows what I look like, so I should probably make some more live action sketches. So I latch onto the nearest and only amateur cinematographer I can find. That's Kieran. I graduate university and do this thing while I'm there. Ah, that'll never get old. While visiting my friend Chris's house, possibly for the last time as our friendship has become increasingly strained over the years, I accidentally cross paths with his sister, Jenny, once again. And it turns out I am nowhere near as over her as I thought I was, and we soon after begin dating. Sure. Meanwhile, my friend Ed is going through chemotherapy, but things are looking good and he should be out of hospital and able to move in with me very soon. After a few wasted house hunting trips to London, I finally find an apartment in Wimbledon for us to both move into and begin our careers as creative partners. Side note, convincing a landlord that YouTuber is a real job, not easy at all. Shortly after moving to London though, my backpack is stolen. My camera, hard drive, laptop, sketchbook, even my glasses glasses are all gone in an instant, and with them go a bunch of projects, including the nearly completed Crash Zoom pilot, and it doesn't get much worse than that. Except it does. Ed's health suddenly gets a lot worse, and the doctors start running out of options. His room in our apartment ends up going to an old friend of mine from university, and a couple of friends of Ed's that were living in his house get forced to move in with me instead. What's funny is that, as I mentioned earlier, we are currently in the middle of my golden era on YouTube. I am churning out some of the best and most popular content I will ever make, but that all pales in comparison to what happens next. Ed dies. Really? Yeah. I was just making animations for you guys. Shortly after Ed's funeral, I'm told that he wanted his show Ed's World to continue, and in what I can only describe as well-meaning, grief-inspired denial, I launch a fundraiser called Ed's World Legacy to keep the show going for a few more episodes. I reckon it'll only take me a year to complete. Yep. Due to the abrupt loss of my co-tenant, my estate agents kindly allow me to move out of my current apartment a year and a half early on the condition that they oversee me moving into a new place through them. And that happens. They then immediately claim it didn't happen and charge me £10,000 for abandoning my current apartment. So that was cool. Probably the result of another stage of grief, but I feel an overwhelming need for both control and chaos. So I cut off all of my hair as you do. I'm introduced to a personal trainer and begin eating right and regularly exercising. It's not exactly fun, but the routine and discipline definitely helps me keep my head above water during this time. While visiting my ex in Scotland and hosting a little YouTube meetup, I become the 96th YouTuber to hit a million subscribers. So naturally, we have a dance party. I noticed that the URL youtube.com forward slash fuck is unclaimed, so I put in a formal request for it to redirect to my channel, and surprisingly, it's somehow approved. A lot of people stumble across my work thanks to that. Following the Edsworld Legacy fundraiser, we make our first charitable donation of the show's profits, and I'm just so glad that something positive can come of the grim situation. I still don't really know what it was. Maybe grief, maybe stress, maybe self-doubt, but by the start of 2013, I'm no longer able to write on my own. Words don't come to me naturally, and I'm finding it impossible to hold on to thoughts. A friend from our London man time pub nights, Eddie, offers to help me work on my script, and it quickly becomes clear that his enthusiasm and talent is invaluable, so we begin working together very regularly. But while that creative relationship is just beginning, my relationship with Jenny comes to an end. Midway through an advertising campaign for YouTube, higher ups at Google discover that I own the fuck URL. And not only am I immediately pulled from the campaign, but they threaten to terminate all of my accounts. You literally gave me the URL, guys. Anyway, it should probably be clear by now that my mind is not doing too well. And weirdly, it's the release of Grand Theft Auto V that's the straw that breaks the camel's back. A game that I've been looking forward to for years comes out and I feel nothing. And come to think of it, I haven't felt anything good for a very long time. And my friends have started saying that they miss the old me, and I, I don't know what that means anymore, so... 
When I feel up to it, I go to the doctors and I'm pretty quickly diagnosed with severe depression. I'm referred to a therapist and put onto a course of antidepressants. But the doctor very quickly came to the assessment that, hey, you have severe depression. It's not all bad though, as I find myself in a new relationship with a girl named Tara, and that was good. But now let's get back to the bad stuff. I don't react to the antidepressants well to say the least. In the early hours of one morning, I have a huge panic attack and begin frantically emailing everyone I regard to have a mutually toxic relationship with, telling them amongst other things that I don't think we should be friends or know each other anymore. This goes about as well as you'd expect and my social circle largely implodes. We refer to it as the night of many messages. <laughs> So you have the nine many messages. For me, it's called the fuck off five. Um... Because of my inability to sustain friendships, I develop an aversion to displaying photographs of people I care about for fear that any picture I put up, I may have to one day take back down. I begin obsessively oversharing and delve headfirst into the world of social justice activism as aggressively as I am ill-informed. I start fights with anyone I disagree with online and go looking for trouble where there really needn't be any. Remember those animators from earlier, the ones that I underpaid? Well, they're back and they brought their friends and they're all rightfully angry and I'm not handling that very well either. Oh, and then for a little while, I tried to become a sex educator with an advice blog. And while I'm proud of what was eventually achieved, it was not without incident. And I also posted a tasteful nude at one point. I made a mess and a fool of myself, and I did it all so very publicly, but hey, I celebrated my first Christmas. That was nice. Okay, 2014, new year, new me. You know what, let's try a different type of antidepressant. Side effects apparently may include increased appetite and rapid weight gain, but I'm sure that'll be fine. On a more sophisticated note though, I'm invited to take part in a debate at Cambridge University over whether or not YouTube is the future of media. My side argues that no, it's not. And we win! So, yay! But also, oh no. The time has come for me to move out of my home in West London. What friendships I have left have been pushed to their limits. People need a break from me, and I need a break from people. Also, I should probably get my foot on the property ladder while I still have some sort of stable income. I spend a few months couch surfing and house hunting, and I also gain a lot of weight really fast. So maybe those new meds weren't such a good idea. While at VidCon, I get an email. Prompted by my instability and oversharing, my forcefully estranged ex-best friend Chris wishes to be disassociated from me in every way. A contract is signed, his name is removed from all my channels, and we cease all further communication. The blood is... very bad. In lighter news though, I finally find and move into my own home at the other side of London, away from everyone else I know, just like I wanted. I'm not homeless anymore. Yeah! Similarly, I get a new office for the now legitimate Turbo Punch Limited. My editor Elliot, my producer Crystal, and my me move in and quickly renovated into the man-child man cave you see before you now. Oh yeah, we also released a game called Cat Attack. That was really cool. You can't download it now though because the company we made it with went out of business which is less cool. In 2015 though, Crash Zoom, the series that had been in and out of hiatus for over four years, finally made it to the small screen. After a few months of settling in though, it's time to make my house into a home. And by home, I mean a dust, noise, and stress-filled building site hellhole for the next six months. Then a bunch of really shitty things happen in rapid succession. My parents' marriage comes to an abrupt end and they get divorced. Fun fact, it still messes you up even if you're an adult. My relationship with Tara also comes to an end. But at least Dudley, the family dog, is just kidding, he's dead. <sighs> Okay, I wanna take a quick break to say I know that this video has become a bit suffocatingly negative. I'm trying to focus on first times, significant moments, and personal milestones. And around this point in my life, most of those were just kind of big downers, or at least the ones that stuck with me, the ones that I remember were. That said though, I learned the hard way that you can't put shoes in the tumble dryer. They're not my shoes, they're Elliot's shoes. Fuck your shoes. Here I enter what I call my era of introspection, where I start looking back at my life, taking stock, and trying to slowly set some things right. I launch a series called Thanks Day, where I try to give credit to all the people I've worked with over the years. I start reaching out to and setting things right with creative partners that I may have wronged or underpaid. And I launched this series, The Complete History of Me. But unfortunately, none of that matters because at the age of 25, I die in a car accident. 
Or at least that's what 4chan convinced a lot of the internet had happened. Coincidentally though, I did very nearly break my neck shortly after falling over a railing drunkenly one night. Don't worry, my face broke my fall. Crystal takes her leave from Turbo Punch and Eddie joins the team as my full-time creative partner. We're briefly hired by BBC Comedy to make our own pilot for a sketch show. Upon its completion, they never get back to us. But they also never fire us, so for all I know, I still work for the BBC. Writing, or more specifically cashing in on a wave of YouTubers releasing books, I revamp all the old Astov comics, adapt most of the series, and release a book which I then take on a cross-country tour. For some reason. The reason is money, obviously. On January 1st, 2016, I begin dating a new lady, Charlie. I was gonna wait until I was back from holiday to ask her if she wanted to go out with me, but I figured New Year's Day would make for a cooler anniversary. I begin uploading daily selfies under the mind-blowingly innovative hashtag Selfie Steam in an attempt to boost my self-esteem. It kind of works, but it also becomes so much of a chore. I did get this selfie out of it though. Damn, that's a good selfie. I embark on a medically supervised ketosis diet. Truth be told, I felt too scared and fat to lose weight the quote unquote right way. I needed it gone fast. Ed's World Legacy finally comes to a close with the release of its finale titled The End. While I made a lot of mistakes over those four years and it took a huge toll on my mental and financial well-being, I am still immensely proud of what was achieved and I will always remember the show with such great fondness. And also, it raised a lot of money for charity, so that was great. Speaking of financial strain, I take what's left of my savings and pay off my mum's mortgage following my parents' divorce. I can't tell anyone about this though for fear that it would be too divisive within my family. Fun! With Ed's World Over, we suddenly have a lot more time on our hands, so I start a weekly vlog series with the hope of connecting with my audience, but also just giving Elliot something to do. I said beep, beep, I'm a sheep. I said beep, beep, I'm a sheep. I said beep, beep. I'm a sheep, I said beep beep, I'm a sheep. 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 I said Despite making strides with my diet, I fall off the wagon and find it impossible to get back into the groove of it. I try but repeatedly fail to restart it. My YouTube channel turns 10 years old and the horrifying reality that some of the people watching my videos are younger than my videos, really starts to set in. I win the Community Spirit Award at Summer in the City for how much work I put into my meet and greets, which is funny because just five years earlier, how few people I met at that event is the reason I completely changed the way I made videos. Perhaps spurred on by my failure to lose weight, the stresses of life, or just the ebbs and flows of depression, but here my mental health takes a massive dive, and despite all the good things I have going on, I begin obsessively ideating suicide. But yay, it's my face on billboards and buses! Charlie moves in, and before long we get my puggleer called Squidge. Look at him taking his first little steps into my home. Oh, he's a good boy. <laughs> I'm mildly distracted from how sad I am. Again, though, despite how much I have going on for me on the surface, I am still deep into a really dark place and super into the idea of not being around anymore. I consume dangerous amounts of food and alcohol with the intention of not stopping until my body just kind of gives up. It just seems a little easier and tastier than real suicide. But perhaps a positive side effect of this is that I began to make peace with all of the lost love and friendships, and so I began printing, framing, and displaying photographs of special people and special moments in my life once again. Speaking of making peace though, guess whose parents just got back together and remarried? <laughs> okay! And guess who just had his first real Christmas with his own lights and his own tree and presents and everything. It, it's me. This video is about me. Obviously the answer is going to be me. After both getting particularly drunk at a movie screening, my old best friend Chris and I cross paths. We hug it out, cry a little bit, and soon after meet up and agree to scrap the contract from 2014. We know that things can't go back to how they were, but we can at least both move on no longer burdened by anger and sadness. Having become disillusioned with over 10 years of making YouTube videos, I boot up a series called Content in the hopes of rediscovering what it is that makes this 
fun. Eddie's baby boy Rick gets christened and I become a godfather. I still have no idea what that entails, so I'm just gonna wait until I have a school bully to beat up. The last week series comes to a close at 100 episodes and last month takes its place. I get summoned for jury service and put on a case that was super pleasant and makes it very easy to sleep at night. Just kidding, it was about child molestation. Anyway, meet Pink, Charlie's Doberman. After making six episodes of Crash Zoom off our own backs, we launch a Kickstarter to help fund the next season. It hits its goal pretty quickly and now we gotta make it, damn it. Desperate for closure on all the public mishaps and scandals I've had over the years, mostly in and around 2013, I put together a gigantic master post, archiving, acknowledging, and apologizing for pretty much every single one of my missteps in the hope of being able to move on and for the internet to do the same. And it actually kind of works, at least for me, it helped a lot with the things that keep me up at night. Thanks to my support network, emotional closure, the master post self-reflection, and a positive spike in my mental health, I suddenly come out the other side of that deep, deep depression and stop wanting to eat myself to death. Maybe I'll try doing right by myself and my body once again. And that brings us to the end of this video, but fortunately not the end of my life. Thank you for following me on my journey so far and all the twists and turns my life has taken. If there's one thing you can take away from this video, it's that everything in life happens. I'll see you in 2027 for The Complete History of Me, part four. Tom Scott, out.